Okay, this will be the uh, video for the hands-on portion of the uh, suture cores. What I want you to do is take your bite fork stabilizer and take the backing off so you can place the bite fork stabilizer on your tabletop. That'll hold it in place. What we're going to do is we're going to do the three different uh, types of um, suture uh, designs. Uh, interrupted, continuous locking, and then the figure eight. So your go-to uh, suture typically is going to be the interrupted and you always go from the movable tissue, the tissue that you've reflected the flap, the buckle, buckle um, tissue typically, and you'll go from the movable stuff to the fixed. So what we'll do is we'll start from the outside and we're going to come in and we'll see where we can find the, the suture needle right there. And what you're going to do is you're going to take, hold the needle in your finger, between your thumb and your finger, and then when I do the Itsy Bitsy Spider, and then you're going to take one, one tie, grab on, and we'll tighten that, and then you're going to go the opposite direction, grab it again, and pull through, and then one, two, for good luck, and pull through again. You can see my thumb is inside the mouth. And we'll take a clip that to hold it. I always cut it to minimize um, issues. If my dental assistant were to cut it too short and cut the knot, then I'd uh, have to give her a knuckle sandwich. So I always cut it. Um, you always handle the needle yourself. You don't hand it to the, the patient or the assistant or anything. So um, just a little here. I'm going to take and I'm going to, re I'm going to move this. Now the continuous locking suture is something that you would use if you've extracted a bunch of teeth or um, you've done an exostosis removal for a denture or whatever. Uh, I've shown some of that in, uh, in one of the presentations on suturing. So what you're going to do with the continuous locking is it's very beneficial that instead of having to do interrupted sutures and do all the ties, you tie it once on each end. So what you're going to do is you're going to start once again from the, the movable tissue, usually the buckle, and go through. And we're going to do an interrupted. And now I showed you the itsy bitsy spider, which is a technique that I've just used the whole time. There's another technique to be able to get into the mouth. And what you want to do is take it, we call this the Bombeck technique, Jamie Bombeck, one of our TAs, showed us this, is you're going to take the suture, you're going to take this, the needle holder and just pass it down so you can grab onto here. You'll, you'll do one turn and then tie it off, go back the opposite direction. off. Notice I dropped the needle as poor form. And then go back the opposite direction again and tie off. So I'm always trying to maintain control of the needle. Now notice you've got a long portion and then the short portion. If the short portion is getting in the way you can you can go ahead and uh, and cut that. Do not cut the long portion on here because that's what you're going to continue running your suture. So you can trim that off, get it out of your way, and then it doesn't become a problem for you. As you continue to go through, now you can see that we've done the, the interrupted. Now let's go through and do the locking sutures. And, I've done this so many times, I think I've got a, um, a cut here, so I'll have to find another place to put this. Uh, this is take number 15 or so. So once we grab the, the suture. Now to make this a locking, all you're going to do is take and twist this and pass it through. So there you go. 
go. Hopefully my bike force stabilizer won't be torn like it was on the last go round. So you can pass it through. Okay, I'm taking a little bit further this time, so I actually bite into it, pass it through again. of this just from the speed standpoint. I'm busy doing all those those ties. Now you know somebody that's got talent these are all parallel and this goes all across the front. It's all kind of similar. Of course it depends on the tissue as well. And then what do we do the last time when you're ready to tie it off is you'll go back and do not, do not pull this all the way through because you're going to be tying off to here. So you'll tie that right in there and go back the opposite direction. again, go back the other way, and try again, clip it, notice when you're ready to cut it, just clip onto that, and then you cut those ends, and if you're going to err, err on the side of cutting them too long, and then you can go back and fix them. The last thing we're going to do is for a sinus perforation, uh, we're going to do what's called a figure eight, or if you're doing grafting, LPRF grafting, you can use this technique, but go from the outside, and what I like to do is go from the distal buckle through to the, to the lingual or the palatal, and bring that dude through, bring it back to the front, don't pull your suture through. And now go to the mesial portion. Go back through. And then see there's your figure eight. So then we'll just take and tie that once. Go the opposite direction. Tie it again. Go back one more time, tie it, because I'm going to cut it this time, just go ahead and clip that onto your end and then you snip that off. And like I say, error on the side of cutting too much, because then you can go back. Um, safety first, you know, always control your, whoop, and I cut that, um, always control your, your needle. Um, and you know you're not handing it to your dental assistant or allowing it to flap around. Um, so if you cut it, if you cut it, you're not the thing will come back out. Now there is a right way and a wrong way to remove a suture, and I'll just show you on this one. As notice all of this stuff that's sticking up that you can see. Well, after it's been in the patient's mouth for several days, even a day it's going to be, you know, a chocolate block full of bacteria and all kinds of junk in the mouth. So what you want to do is look and see where you can cut this and still not have to drag the knot through there. But you can cut this here and when, when you get rid of that, notice how all of this stuff that was visible in the mouth um, does not get drugged through the tissue. So there's a right way and a wrong way to do this. So um, practice up. What I suggest also when you get home, practice doesn't make perfect; it makes permanent. So if you're practicing wrong, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna learn wrong. 
Get yourself a rubber bowl and take your bike fork stabilizer and stick it in here like this and then that way you're working in the mouth instead of tying a suture way out here that has really nothing to do with uh, reality. So give that a try. Work on it in the, in the clinic and um, you know just a little bit of work, a little bit of effort, um, you'll do well. All right.